Welcome to Fun With Knots um, with your host Paul Gaskell from Fishing Discoveries. I'm going to go through a demonstration of the pips and knot pretty quickly, so if you're impatient ones that just want to know how to tie it, you can get straight in and uh, without any messing. I'll do the whys and wherefores after that, so for the people that are interested in you know, the mechanics of it, you can stay tuned for that. So a very quick demonstration. Um, if you feed, it's important on this one to actually feed the line in through the underside of the hook. Um, so it goes through the bottom side of the eye. Now, obviously this is not what I'm fishing with, this is demonstration paracord. On a normal sized hook and line, what you, the key little trick is, is that you use the pad of your middle finger and dig the hook into it ever so slightly to create some tension. You just hold it in place with that. But because this is massive and I've got little baby hands, um, I'm gonna pretend that what I'm doing is holding it with that middle finger in place. So what you've got is a, a bend that uh, has come up through the bottom side of the eye of the hook. You take this tag end, to turn it back on itself, so you've got kind of almost like an S shape when you're looking at it from my side. And then keeping that tension on so that that loop doesn't sort of jiggle around everywhere, what I do is I use the pad of my index finger to push that tag down. And it, you'll find that there's just enough spring in the material that you're using to actually do that really nice, neatly. Then what I do is I use the, the nail of my thumb to shove that tag upwards like that. And by alternating pad, nail, pad, like that, you can do two or three complete turns, it's up to you. Then it's just a case of tucking that tag end through the loop that you've made at this end. You wet it and then pull it sort of 80% tight, I would say, and it kind of looks like that. The last thing to do once you've wet it, and that's important, is that you pull on the main leg of your line and then snug that down. You'll often find when you tighten it for real in monofilament or fluorocarbon, nylon, copolymer, whatever you're using, it gives the knot gives a little jump when the final turn just sits into the right place. So you're often watching for that little dunk like that, and it'll that'll tell you, it'll clue you in on to when it's um, actually snugged down properly. Trim that off, and that's it. With a little bit of practice, it's really really fast to tie it. It also doesn't take a, a huge amount of tippet material to tie it. Um, it's super strong. It's all but equal to the Palomar knot, which is you know, the, basically the strongest one that we've found between us so far. But what I like about it is that you don't need sort of to, you know, a huge amount of doubled over tippet to tie, and it's really, really fast. But also you end up in, in real tippet material, in inverted commas, there's a very small bump in front of that fly, and it's, it retains so much more of your braking strain. Um, Obviously, it varies between tippet materials, but you can you can get, you know, in, in a lot of common knots, whether it's like a half blood knot, improved clinch knot, whatever it is, you can be losing 40 and 50 percent of your braking strain, and this gets close to retaining most of that braking strain. It seems to spread the load and avoid some of that scissoring action that you get with some other knots. So that's why we, you know, I particularly favour that knot. It has a very small, unobtrusive size at the eye of the hook. Doesn't distract from whatever else is going on with, you know, the fly that you're using. It's strong. It's fast to tie, um, and as I say, it doesn't use a whole heap of tippet, so it preserves quite a lot of your tippet. Because if you think about it, you can actually tie and do most of the fiddling of the knot up here when you do the fine detail. Then you've got that loop, and when you draw it up, it means that all the little bits of delicate work that you've done is then moved onto and snugged onto the hook eye. So that's why it's really nice, and that's how you can actually be quite conservative with the amount of tippet that you end up losing. You don't, don't you lose very much every time that you tie it. Um, so yeah, give it a try. Um, let me know if you've got any difficulties tying it, if you find any neater ways of tying it, the dexterity, however you do it. Uh, and if you want to see more stuff like this, and learn, you know, next time we come out with a tip like this, don't forget to uh, subscribe and click on the notifications bell because that way, that's the only way that YouTube will tell you that we've put something else out. So I hope you enjoyed this one and join me on the next one.